going to have this and how to use it. Are we rolling? Well, good morning. Here we are. We thank you for joining us today. We're learning about the seven spirits of God. We've went through two of the intros. I thought they were good, not because I gave them, but because they were excellent examples to prepare you for what's getting ready to happen. Today, we're going to learn about the first one, and that is the Spirit of God. One of the things that we are learning, and I, I went through this earlier this morning, Daryl Lefwich is teaching on Tuesday nights, as you know. If you don't know, then please go out to Eagle's Nest Watch Ministries, and you will see his teachings on the uh, seasons and times and the, the Jewish festivals. Now he's teaching on the ancient Jewish wedding, which is absolutely coming into focus and a blend of where we are going with the seven spirits of God. And it's the preparation of the bride, who we are the bride. We are the bride. And what God is doing is, he's trying to prepare us to help us understand who the bride is, and what she is, and what she will be doing. My understanding of what God's revealing to me is that the bride will have these seven spirits resting on her. And I am absolutely overwhelmed is not a good word. I'm absolutely excited and amazed that through all this process that we've went through since 20, that here we are. We started with the uh, activation of the supernatural. And he, he does did that and still doing that. We're still exercising that and experiencing that. The manifestations are now coming without having to go through that process, they are happening in our lives, in our daily lives as they are needed. And the reason that's happening is because we now understand the supernatural activations. We know what they smell like, feel like. Uh, they're becoming a part of our life and we understand it. Well, we have that, the manifest, understanding the manifestations of the supernatural. Now we've got these seven spirits of God that will come in and we're gonna understand what they are. We will be sensitive to them and understand how they move and what we, the bride, what our responsibility is. We are being matured. We are being matured and prepared for what he's calling us into. Today's lesson is the Spirit of God. That's one of the seven spirits. Last week's lesson uh, says, one of the, I'm going to start off with this, those who have a strong anointing for true Biblical knowledge, the ways of God typically have the fear of God along with that knowledge. You could have all kinds of knowledge and experience, but if you do not have the fear of God to temper that, you could get into a lot of trouble, and I'll be honest with you, you could lose everything. If you abuse it, I think it, it could be taken away. I may be right, may be wrong. Why would you give a four-year-old a seven or a nine millimeter gun? Why would you do that? 
With great revelation knowledge often comes the fear of the Lord to balance it out. We must have balance in these seven spirits. All right, the Spirit of the Lord. Father, I ask that you, Holy Spirit, Jesus, bring your breath on this. Father, bring your breath on this teaching. Verlinda just is not smart enough to do all this. You have to bring an anointing on this so that it will refresh the hearts and the spirits of those that receive it. Only you could do that. And I thank you so much that you are here to do that. We come expecting from you. We come expecting from you, not us. Lord, give us wisdom to know what to do with what we learn and what is imparted and infused in us. And we give you all the glory. Father, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. We must understand there is a distinct difference between the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit and the sevenfold Holy Spirit. That's in Isaiah 11, 2. There's a difference. The nine gifts are, number one, word of knowledge, two, word of wisdom, three, gifts of healing, four, gift of faith, five, working of miracles, six, discerning of spirits, seven, gift of prophecy, gifts of tongues, and interpretation of tongues. There we're going with those gifts. One of the things in our service before we started taping this is that God was giving us a deeper level of those gifts because we need them, and to be honest with you, because he can trust us with it. The seven mantles or sevenfold Holy Spirit are number one, Spirit of the Lord, two, Spirit of wisdom, three. Spirit of understanding, sometimes they put in revelation, four. Spirit of counsel, five. Spirit of might, six. Spirit of knowledge, seven. Spirit of the fear of the Lord. These seven mantles of the Holy Spirit are the seven spirits of God, which descend descended and rested on Jesus. You've got to understand he had all of this. That's how he did what he did. They descended on him like a dove at his baptism. We could say that the seven spirits of God operating in our lives are the nine gifts of the spirit in their full maturity. In the full maturity of those gifts comes the seven spirits. Jesus didn't simply operate in a word of knowledge as one of the nine gifts. He operated in the spirit of knowledge as an endless access point. He didn't simply operate in the gifts of healing, but in the spirit of might. This mantle did not lift from him, but rather remained upon him after his baptism. This isn't, this isn't a come and go. This is you walk with this, you talk with this, you eat with this, you breathe with this, you sleep with this. This is where I want to go and this is where I want to stay. I'm serious. This is what I want. God knows that this is what I want. He knows that I have persistently and passionately have after this with him. And folks, this is not because you have a brag. I'm going to put it out there. This is not because you have a bragging point. This is not because everybody's going to look at you and say, ooh, wow. This has got nothing to do with the reputation that you think you have because you have no reputation that is hidden in him. 
This is because when you have this, you have the presence of God. And I want that presence more than I want anything in this life. This is where we're all going. And to be very honest with you, with what we're going to have to deal with in the future, we're going to have to have it. Because the darkness will become even darker. It's the word. The darkness will become even darker. And do you think God's going to sit around and let us be whipped around by this? No. He's going to empower and gift us with what we need to fight it and to win those battles. The Spirit of the Lord distributes to each one gifts of the Spirit as he sees fit. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. This means they come and go. An example is you may pray for 10 people, but only seven get healed. And every one of us have wondered about that. Why did I pray for 10 people and only seven of them got healed? Why didn't the other three? There's a lot of different answers to that. No one really knows the answer to that, I don't think. There's very, very, very varied reasons why that doesn't happen. The Lord confirms his word with signs following. The Lord confirms his word with signs following. When the word is preached, the Spirit will confirm it because the word and the Spirit agree. And that's one of the things I, I really like and appreciate with Daryl is he, he uses so much of the word and it agrees with when he brings in the prophetic and the spirit part of that, it agrees with the word. And that's where we've got to put our seat and that's where we've got to stay. We can't have any of this hocus pocus mess that's out there. This new age witchcraft junk that's out there. And it's out there and it's invading the charismatic spirit filled world. It's corrupting it and it is perverting it. And it is leading people straight to hell. Straight to hell. Hear my words. You follow that, you will wind up in hell. The Word and the Spirit agree. That is why we must worship Him and worship Him spirit and in truth. There is a difference between being born of the Spirit and being baptized or filled with the Spirit. There is a difference. Many people experience the comings and goings of the Spirit, but few have the Spirit resting upon them. I want it resting upon me. I want it when I wake up, it's there, out of sleep. With Jesus, Jesus is our example. He is our perfect example. This is who we're looking at as an example. I love Elijah. I absolutely love Elijah. And I refer to him a lot. I learned a lot when I studied him. But Elijah, bless his heart, he went over to... Uh, Left, left, you know, Mount Carmel, prayed down the rain, outran the horses, and he gets over there and he gets threatened by Jezebel and he gets scared. He was a man. He was a human. I can't say I'd do any different. I mean, I just got to be honest, say I wouldn't do any different. And that's nothing uh, bad to say about Elijah. But with Jesus... He faced everything, death, a cruel, cruel death, yet he was obedient to do what he was called to do. He is our example. We are to look at him as our example. With Jesus, the Spirit of the Lord descended upon him. When that happened, there was a consisting and a continuity of miracles 
he continued in miracles. And he was consistent in miracles. Signs and wonders, because the Spirit rested on him. Father, give us a desire to have those spirits resting on us and that we will not rest until we have them. <laughs> he was fully God and man. There is coming a baptism of fire. That's what I'm after. And they, uh, Daryl has a teaching that's coming when is that coming, Daryl, when you talk about the different baptisms? I can't wait for it, too. Uh. In September? At the end of September? At the end of September, he's going to have the teaching on the, on the baptisms. I cannot wait for that. A baptism of the Spirit, of, a baptism of the Spirit resting upon us. Now we're shifting to us. This is available to us. When I received the baptism of fire, I'm going to tell you what happened. I probably told you before, no doubt, but some of you may not know. I'm this Baptist person, and I'm teaching Sunday school and doing all that stuff. And uh, I, was, I loved the Ten Commandments. And God had been dealing with me and preparing me, and I, I didn't know what was going on. I cried a lot. I remember that. And I don't cry. I'm not a crier, but I cried a lot. In church, I would cry. And I'd want to be baptized again, and the Holy Spirit would say, you've already been baptized. It's not going to help you out. Don't do that. I said, okay. I watched the uh, Ten Commandments. Earth opens up, they go to hell, and I looked at that, and I said, they're going to hell, but I don't have to go because of Jesus. I go to bed that night, and God, I would went through a, a terrible divorce, and I had not been uh, healed of all that mess. And um, God wakes me up in the middle of the night, and he says, um, he says, you're going to hell. I'm teaching Sunday school. I think I'm even song leader at this point. I've done Bible school. You know, I've done all this stuff. And he says, Berlinda, he says, uh, I wake up and I'm in hell. I see the fire. I don't burn. I did not see a demon, thank God. But I felt hopelessness that I can't even define. It was just so, it was, I was horrified and I was so afraid. I jumped out of the bed, I laid prostrate on the floor, and I said, God, please forgive me. He says, get right with God or you're going to hell. Yeah. Now that blows any of this once in grace always all to pieces. It blows it up. That's why I don't believe it. I don't believe that for a minute because I got saved when I was 11 years old that I really got saved. And I said, God, please forgive me. You have 100% of me, 100%. I had held back some, some of that stuff. And I, asked, I pleaded for forgiveness. Fire came down and went through the top of my head. Fire and electricity went through my body. It went through my head, it went through my hands, went through my legs, and it burnt me. I mean, it burnt out all that mess. And I laid there, and I burnt, and I shook for a long time. Ernie's in bed, sleeping very nicely. But I'm down the floor being burnt up, which was a good thing. And I laid there, and I couldn't do anything for a long time. All I did was just lay there and shake. I just shook, and I was burning, and I burnt. I get up the next day. I go to bed. I get up the next day, and it was Easter. And I had different people come up to me and they say, you look different, you look different. Well, I was different, thank God. So I had fire. I had a baptism of fire. I later found out what that was all about. There is coming a baptism of fire, a baptism of the spirit of resting upon us. 
I want the one that rests on us. I've had the one that burnt out all the mess on me and then filled, filled me, but I'm wanting this to rest on me, which will kick which will kick the supernatural into overdrive. I am ready for overdrive. I am ready, God, for overdrive. I am ready to pay the price for overdrive. Few in church history have experienced such a baptism, but very soon, I believe, there will come a corporate baptism, and I'm speaking to the corporate here, and I'm speaking to the corporate here, that will include a company of remnant of the church. You're the remnant. You're really the remnant of the remnant. This is the Romans 8 manifestation of the sons of God, which all creation groans and waits for God to prophesy till Christ be formed in you. Jesus is getting ready to be formed in us. This is what we're looking for. We're looking to be the bride that he becomes one in us. That's what I shared with you earlier, what he said to me last week. He said, we will become one. Jesus and us will become one. What rested on him will rest on us. We will all come into unity of the faith and knowledge of the Son of God. We will become one with him. We will become the sons of God to a perfect man. Soon we will receive the full inheritance of the sevenfold Holy Spirit. He wants all of us to walk in the fullness of the seven spirits. There is a new baptism. Bring on the corporate man, the mature man in Christ. When I say man, I'm talking about women as well. This is not just men, but I'm talking about women as well. Who will bring us to a new level of the supernatural. We're going to another level. When it's not just a time of visitation, but it's a time of habitation. Habitation. And a new corporate manifestation of the Son of God. There will be a corporate manifestation of the Son of God. We do not diminish spiritual gifts, but they can also come to full maturity, just like the spirit of the spirit can of the spirit that can grow, develop, and mature inside every believer. We're talking about growing. We're talking about developing we're talking about maturing inside of us throw away your milk cartons you're getting ready to eat steak and swallow it we can now have access to god through christ any time when the heavens are spent are open to you that's when the kingdom of heaven has come to you. Let me read it again. We can now have access to God through Christ anytime. When the heavens are opened to you, that's when the kingdom of heaven has come to you. We're talking about the kingdom. We're not talking about something that's coming in a sweet by and by we're talking about it being here now, and you got it. You are the walking kingdom. You are the kingdom. We're not talking about the organization. We're talking about you are the kingdom. I got this revelation a long time ago when I was dealing with that sign, getting that sign, and I can still remember I was up here walking on a Sunday morning, and he said, Verlinda, 
everybody here is the kingdom. This is not some fairy tale thing. This is not something to look for in the future. We are the kingdom. You are the kingdom of God. This is a revelation that we have to get. So when you say your kingdom come, you're talking about yourself. And you're talking about those seven spirits of God resting on you. And we're talking about you moving in and through the people that you are around. And those seven spirits of God are manifesting into those people, onto those people. And it is changing those people. It is transforming those people into that kingdom itself. You change the atmosphere. You're the kingdom and you are changing the atmosphere of where you are into the kingdom of God. This is how it's going to work. This is how it's going to work. We can all say, Spirit of the Lord, there is an open heaven available to me and I want to access that whenever I can. So, Father, right now we pray. We're going to go to an attitude of prayer and surrender to you. First, forgive us, Lord, of our sins and shortcomings. Have mercy on us and please forgive us. Father, we surrender to you. Jesus, we surrender to you. Holy Spirit, we surrender to you. So we say, Spirit of the Lord, there is an open heaven that's available to me. And I want to access that whenever I can. I want to come in covenant with you that this will happen. Not can happen, this will happen. And we stand expecting it to happen now in the name of Jesus. So we say, Father, let your kingdom come on earth. That's on me. That's on everybody here, as it is in heaven. Example, words of knowledge may introduce you to healing. With this new baptism, the heavens will be open to us. The heavens will be open to us. God's voice will be revealed and received and the earth and the spirit of god will descend and remain on us we're talking a new ball game folks this is a whole new ball game we're talking about and it's a good one the spirit descends the heavens open and the voice of god speaks simula Tenuously, that's a hard word for me, across the body of Christ and in all the churches. Wow. Who stands in position themselves to receive it and not only receive it, but obey it. That's why he had us to repent and to surrender. This requires surrender. This requires surrender. Your personal ball games are over. They are. Your personal ball games are over. You're now in the kingdom. Then comes the doubling, tripling, and quadrupling outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In other words, we got more to come. I told you earlier that he told me oh, a month and a half ago, he said, when you get this, he said the first chapter that you will experience is called discovery. You're going to be discovering what it is and what it's like and how to move with it. That means that there's more. That as you learn, there's more to come. There is more to come. You've got to remember that as more come, 
It's because you need it, and it's not to make you feel really good about yourself and prideful and arrogant that I got this and I got that. That spirit of competition does not operate, does not, and will never work in the kingdom of God. That's right. It will not operate, will not be tolerated. So if you're operating with that now, you better repent of it and get rid of that trash that is trash from hell because it's not going to operate in the kingdom. Open heavens, supernatural signs and wonders, and the voice of God speaking clearer than ever. You're going to hear him better than you've ever heard him in your life. You're going to know exactly what to do and how to do it and when to do it. You're going to know the keys to people. The Lord wants us to operate in this now. How many want to do it now? I appreciate all those signs, those hands. Father, you see the hands that are risen, that are raised. You see the hands out there that are raised. Father, I thank you that your eyes are going back and forth looking for those that are looking for you. And you see these hands. Father, we stand in preparation and great expectation of this, of receiving this. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord wants us to operate in this now. He wants us to be to believe we can hear from him every day. Every day. Angelic encounters will become more consistent expressions of the supernatural. That's why this morning when I was praying here at the altar, when I went back on my haunches, whatever you want to call them, but I was basically on my knee. I got that aroma. I got the most beautiful aroma, and it just stayed there. It just stayed there while I was there. When Even when I got up to do the supernatural activations, it was still there. I could still smell it. These are ministering angels. Angelic encounters will become more consistent expressions of the supernatural. 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 through 11. Rita, would you read that, please? Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me get Paul. Paul's got it, and I've got the speaker up here. You know it, it's your favorite scripture. It is 1 Corinthians this is another reason I'm glad you're back. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 2. It's your favorite scriptures. 9 through 11. Okay. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the yeah. things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Thank you. Let's read his favorite scripture. Okay. I should have kept my finger on that. Oh, here we go. An increase is coming. Our natural eyes and ears cannot articulate the things God has prepared for us. We have a decision. We can forsake them or awaken to them by the Spirit. The fullness is coming. And it's got to come, folks, with what's coming at us on the uh, evil side. We've got to have this. 
That's one of the things I keep telling the Lord. I say, God, this is not for bragging points. We need it to fight the level of evil that's coming at us. I've learned some, I got some information yesterday and it grieved me what I heard. And I told the Lord last night, I said, Lord, I was up, I don't know, one o'clock. And I said, Lord, we got to have this to fight the, the evil that's coming at us. We got to have this. We have a decision. We can forsake them or awaken to them by the Spirit. The fullness is coming. Open your heart and say, get ready. I'm going to say it, we're going to say it together. Lord, I want the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I want to continue, I want to continue to learn and grow and to increase the time I spend with you. I want to learn what it means to pray without ceasing. I want to learn what it means to be led by the Spirit. All right, we're going to do this. Lord, Lord. I want the fullness of the Holy Spirit. I want to continue to learn, to grow, and, I, and to increase the time I spend with you. I want to learn what it means to pray without ceasing. I want to learn what it means to be led by the Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Being led by the Spirit is Romans 8, 14. Being the sons of God. All creation is groaning and waiting for this to happen. That's one of David Killian's things that he's said through the years. The fullness of this is direct, directly tied to us learning to be led by the Spirit. We are fulfilling this. One of the signs of maturing, here we go, everybody say ouch, ouch. One of the signs of maturing is a tongue that is fully yielded and surrendered to the Spirit of the Lord. Yeah. One of the signs of maturing is a tongue that is fully yielded and surrendered to the Spirit of the Lord. It is the beginning of maturing into the fullness of the Holy Spirit. He is getting ready to bring us into that maturity. And I thank God for people that want that. I thank him for you that are here. I thank you for you that are dialing in. I say dialing in or going in. You're not dialing in. But that you're tuning in or you're whatever. You're on there to learn this. Because we are preparing to step into this and I have, I have no doubts I have no doubts that this is going to happen he has chosen this generation this people to do this and to be this and how important this is Next week, we're going to learn about wisdom and understanding. And what we're doing, I'm going to tell you again, it's just like the supernatural activations. You're going to understand what wisdom and understanding really is and how it operates and how it's going to move in and through you. He's training us, getting us ready to carry this stuff. He's not going to, I'll be honest with you, I'll tell you what he told me. 
told me this not too long ago. He said, do you honestly think I would give that to you and you not understand what you got? I mean, he really told me that. He says, do you honestly think I would give that to you and you don't know what you got? I said, I understand. And so that's what he's, get, that's what he's doing and getting us prepared. And again, I thank God for Daryl's teaching that is putting this thing all together. We're getting the whole picture here. We're not getting this part or that part. It's all coming together. We are the bride. We're getting ready to get married. We're getting ready to become one in him. We're getting ready to take on his name. And we're getting ready to take on what he carries. So, Father, I thank you for those that are passionately and intently chasing after you. I thank you, Lord, for those that are willing to lay down the old to embrace the new. I thank you, God, that they look at the reset as a relief and not as a duty, not as a uh, 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 a curse against them. But Father, they look at the reset as a new beginning, and it's a new beginning with you, and that it's a new beginning with what you have ordained us to do and to be in and through you. Lord, I ask that you start visiting us in dreams and visions. Lord, I ask that you start speaking to us and that we will hear you in a clear voice and that we will understand what you are saying and what you're doing and that we will cooperate 100% with what you're calling us to do and to be. Father, help us to surrender and to die. Help us to be willing to die so that we can rise up and be who we are in you. We give you all honor, all praise, and all glory because we love you. We passionately love you, and we need you. Father, we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we love you. And it's because of you that we can do all this. It's because of you and your sacrifice. We love you. And we adore you. We thank you. Lord, we're going to give you honor. This is not just something that we say because we've said it in, in the Baptist church for all these years. We really mean it. We give you all the honor and glory for everything that is accomplished in and through us. And we are not in competition with you or with anybody else. This is all you. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, David.